Hi, I'm going to show you my gun collection for home defense. Uh, this is um, this would be part one and show, uh, show you the long guns. Uh, this is a Chris Vector 10 millimeter, very powerful pistol caliber carbine. Um, all the rifles have uh, laser uh, red dots on them and lasers and white lights. You need a white light so you can positively identify your target. You don't want a situation where you're uh, shooting at something you don't know what it is, end up killing the wrong person. And that would be terrible. So white lights are essential. Uh, it has backup uh, sights. If the red dot were to fail, I can still use the um, iron sights that flip up by looking through the red dot. Uh, the other side looks a little different. Okay. Uh, I put this, uh, I bought this uh, extension, this M-lock extension on front here because some people are hitting the mag release by accident uh, right here. Uh, and uh, all these guns have been safety checked, by the way. The, there's no magazines, they're completely empty. Um, and uh, it doesn't happen very much, but sometimes some people, they're gripping it here, and it, as a result, they're pressing that mag release and dropping a magazine when they don't want to. But that uh, difficulty is completely eliminated by putting this forward uh, hand stop forward because of this M lock I've got here. Uh, this is a 10 millimeter, uh, super powerful. It's originally designed as a machine gun, extremely rapid machine gun. 10 millimeter has quite a bit of kick to it normally, especially when you fire it out of a pistol. But the, uh, this is a modern design. The blowback system goes straight back and then down and keeps that muzzle from rising up and you can hardly feel any um, uh, recoil or muzzle flip at all. So it's a great gun and quite expensive. Let's put it down here. <clears throat> Take a look at this one. This is a 22. 22 long rifle made by Smith and Wesson. And uh, I also have the same old flip up sights that I uh, have for the other gun. All the guns have backup sights, or most of them do. This is a red dot sight that came with the gun. This is a barrel shroud. It helps direct the sound forward too. Uh, with the right kind of ammunition, uh, 22s can be an effective defense gun, especially out of a rifle. You can get these high velocity CCI copper rounds that go 1,850 feet a second, stingers, uh, segmented stingers, uh, 1,640 feet a second. That, that can give quite a bit of impact, even out of just a 22. But normally you want a little heavier caliber for uh, home or self-defense. But if you have weak wrists or you're very elderly and having problems uh, with recoil or a petite female, this might be just the perfect gift for you. Um, and follow-up shots can be very rapid too. And you are allowed to keep shooting an attacker who's trying to kill you with an ax or a gun or something. And uh, you keep shooting him as much as you need to in order to stop the threat. And once the threat has stopped, then you have to stop shooting. That's pretty much the law everywhere. Uh, let's take a look at, oh, well, here, here's something. This is an AR-15, really. Uh, it's the civilian version of the military M4. Holosun Red Dot, 50,000 hour battery life. It even has a um, backup uh, power source uh, solar panel. This is a 3X magnifier. I generally don't shoot this any further than 100 yards, about a uh, one foot circular plate. Can hit it pretty consistently. Um, but with this magnifier, everything looks three times closer. So I can reach out to five, 600 yards if I need to with that. Uh, this is a linear compensator. It looks like a silencer, but it's not. And uh, LE6920, this is a Colt. It's a great gun. Fires 556223. I fire polymer rounds out of here, um, first two or three rounds are polymer, and then I go for um, 
some very lightweight varmint rounds of 4,000 feet a second, and then it go a little bit heavier, um, um, you know, like uh, uh, Hornaday uh, civil defense, and then uh, I like to shoot, uh, you know, maybe some soft points like um, Federal Fusion, very effective weapon. Uh, for for home or self-defense. All right. Now that uh, that's the AR-15, the evil black gun. Although that one wasn't black. This is even more evil, according to liberals. This is an AK-47, Russian design. It's actually an American-made gun because this is a Riley RAK-47, and it. Uh, it travels. <laughs> the, the, when you shoot bullets out of this gun, this is probably not a, a, the best first choice gun. It's harder to control the penetration of the bullets. They tend to over penetrate. So you got to choose your ammunition very carefully. I start off with polymer rounds because of that, um, or fragmenting rounds also that break apart upon impact. Um, Otherwise, this, this gun may have a tendency to go through too many housing walls, too many people for that matter. Generally speaking, you just want to shoot the attacker and no one else, unless you have multiple attackers right one behind each other. Uh, AK-47. This is uh, a green laser, um, 1600 lumen light. That's really powerful. You can see for couple thousand feet, I'd imagine, out, outdoors in the dark. Um, you do need a white light. Uh, you got to be tactically aware of how the white lights work, because if you shine this into a mirror inside your house and that mirror, that, the light shines back in your eyes, you're going to have a, you're going to be temporarily blinded, so you don't want that. So uh, learn how to use your weapons well before you, uh, before you think about actually using them for defensive purposes. Train with them, practice with them, go to the range, take courses if, you, if you're not experienced with firearms by certified uh, licensed firearms instructors. This is a 3X scope. So everything appears to be three times closer. I could put a red dot on top of that. I had one on there before I took it off because it's not really needed. Uh, 3X, even at close range, you look through it, the, the target doesn't look huge or anything. It just looks bigger, but you can still recognize what it is and you can get a good solid aim on it. So I just leave it at, like that. Uh, this whole assembly comes off quite easily. Just flick this lever down, it comes off. And you can use the iron sights if you need to as well. Um, obviously, it does not come with this type of coating on it. I put that on there. Um, with this up here sl slid up, that acts as a safety, put it back up, and uh, AK-47. It also, I have a linear compensator on there. Uh, those are appreciated at the range because they direct the sound away from the shooter and uh, out downrange. Um, it doesn't really make it quieter. But it's a little tiny bit quieter to your, the shooter's ears because the sound is directed downrange at the attacker, you might say. And uh, the people on either side of you at the range don't get their ears shocked as much with a, a rifle like this. And then your AK-47s and your uh, AR-15s are pretty, pretty loud. So that's why it's a good idea to have a linear compensator on some of your rifles. Now this one's interesting because it's a pistol caliber carving and I have a bunch of nine millimeter pistols and so it, this uses the same nine millimeter rounds that the pistols use so that's very convenient. This is a Ruger, American made. Um, again, a, a Holison red dot with that long battery life, solar panel backup, little different configuration. Let's see if you can see there. It's hollow underneath. The, the riser is hollow. So you can see the iron sights. I can show you there. That little green thing is the, the rear sight. And the orange thing is the front sight. And they're very accurate too. These iron sights are really quite nice. 
Um, but I normally use a red dot. I, uh, I'm a big believer in red dots. They're, they're a modern, more modern invention. They're gonna replace, uh, primarily replace the use of iron sights, I believe, because, it, well, they're just better when you get right down to it. You have one point of focus instead of two points of focus. You just put the dot on the target and fire. Uh, so if you're just learning, it's good to learn with a red dot. They're actually easier to acquire a sight picture that way because there's less less going on mentally with your eye uh, mind eye coordination that kind of thing but iron sights have worked for years and they are very good and they're good for a backup as well again a powerful white light and a laser uh see if you can sh it doesn't show up that well on camera it shows up like a bright white light but it's not it's a real small precise red dot and you zero in your, your laser, you zero in your red dot and your iron sights, and you have very accurate weaponry that way. This one comes apart in the middle, so you can put it in a backpack and carry it. Out of this, I just shoot uh, um, federal HSD, 147 grains. Uh, on my 9 millimeter pistols, I have a little different sequence of how I do that. But out of this rifle, that's what I use. Okay, and uh, is that everything? One, two, three, four. And I guess so. Uh, this is not a grenade launcher. This is a shotgun, 12 gauge shotgun, Israeli made. Now, you know, Israelis have been fighting battles and wars for centuries, for millennia, and they tend to win their wars and most of their battles and all of their wars and so they know how to make good weapons this is an iwi israeli weapons industry shotgun it holds 16 rounds now you these the each of these tubes has five rounds in it and when one round is empty you rotate to the next round it automatically loads and then you have five more rounds now you're never going to need 16 rounds. I would hope not. Maybe in, a, in battle, in a war situation, you might. But for a civilian defense, it's very unlikely that you would need 16 rounds. So uh, um, <laughs> unless there's a zombie apocalypse, which some reasonable facsimile like that could occur, I would imagine. The one I have in the chamber the first round is number eight birdshot. And then I go to like number seven, six birdshot for the next one in the tube. And then um, BB shot. And then uh, number four buckshot. And then double odd buckshot. And for the last round in each of these tubes, I might have a segmented slug. Um, the double odd buckshot I, I use is segmented as well. It breaks into each pellet breaks into two trocars when it hits. It creates a more devastating wound, yet the overpenetration potential or the potential for collateral damage is less. That's why I, I use segmented rounds and segmented slugs. But all bullets will go through housing walls and apartment walls quite easily, even 22s, birdshot, you name it. But some go through more walls than others. And the best defense, of course, against collateral damage hitting things and people you don't want to hit is to hit the intended target and not miss. So that takes practice at the range. You can practice at home with laser uh, dry fire rounds too. I do that a lot. That saves money that you're not spending at the range. But every now and then you got to go to the range to practice with your gun. And also use range ammo at, uh, at the range, but also fire the ammo you intend to use for defense, at least some rounds through it to make sure it cycles properly. Um, the, uh, our last round might be triple odd buck or a double odd buck with a flight control that holds the pattern type together. Now, some people will criticize saying bird shots no good for self-defense. That's true at longer distances, but it's not true at home, de <clears throat> home defense distances, which is, tends to be quite short. That bird shot is going to stay in a nice tight group. And when it hits a bad guy breaking down your front door, or crashing through your window, it's gonna knock a big chunk of meat out of them. 
and it's going to be very effective at stopping his attack. Um, but one or two shots from this, just the sound is pretty scary. Um, and, and this is a full length shotgun. This is an 18 and a, a half inch barrel. It looks short because of its bullpup design, but the barrel is actually full length. And it's very tactical because it's so short. You can walk around corners and in the hallways and stuff like that. Um, it's, it's a little bit more complicated. I also have backup sights to the red dot. I have a, a laser and a white light. A white light, I said, be an essential. Laser being a good addition. A red dot, an excellent choice as well. But you have to have some sort of sights. And um, uh, well, and a shotgun needs it too. The, the shot, you don't just kind of willy nilly point a shotgun. It, it, that group of buckshot or birdshot, or of course a slug is going to stay in a nice tight group and it's going to hit very much like a bullet. So you, you, you should aim a, a shotgun as well. And this is a fantastic shotgun. Uh, but you, for your first shotgun, you might want a, something a little simpler. Not necessarily. Anybody can learn anything if they put their mind to it. Well, I think that's it for this video. My next video, I'm going to go into handguns. I got a variety of those. Uh, you might uh, like them as well. Anyway, I'll see you in that video. So long for now.